If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already, and with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 186 of the Career Mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. This is the Season 7 Roundup. We'll have a look at how things went down for us in all competitions this season. Have a look at uh, how things went down in the other big European leagues this year because we're intrigued to find out who we might be facing in the Champions League next season. Because of course, for the first time ever, we've qualified for Europe's top elite competition. Not only did we uh, compete in the Europa League last year, and this year, we also won the Europa League this year as well. But we finished third in the Barclays Premier League thanks to the episode yesterday where we were able to get victory over Arsenal. So fingers crossed uh, we can get a decent draw in the Champions League because we, are, of course, by finishing third, qualify automatically for the group stage rather than finishing in fourth where Arsenal ended up and having to qualify by... Um, you know, playing in the the fourth round of the playoffs. Unfortunately for Reading, West Brom and West Ham, they're leaving us this season, getting relegated back down to the Championship. But uh, we'll have a look at how things went down in the other competitions. Of course, Chelsea were able to win the FA Cup. As you can see there, we weren't involved in the latter stages of that competition. Unfortunately, we went out early on. And uh, Aston Villa stopped Chelsea from doing a domestic double with uh, a 5-4 penalty win. Although, actually, did Chelsea win the league? Question mark. Or was it Man United? No, it was Man United. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure whether it was Man United or whether it was uh, whether it was Chelsea. But uh, I won't continue on in that one just yet. But we'll have a look in fixtures because it's e it won't freeze on me this way. This is a, the, a way that, for some reason, I hadn't thought of before now to uh, show you who won the Europa League and the Champions League without it actually freezing on me in that table screen. But obviously we were triumphant in the Europa League final at the Parc de Prince in France by three goals to one over Athletic Bilbao thanks to a Quezzi Appia hat-trick. A hat-trick from Quezzi. Scored, it was top goal scorer in League Two when we started the season and or started this series seven years ago. And uh, unfortunately for Athletic Bilbao, they were on the end of his uh, goal-scoring attributes again with three goals going his way, three goals going our way. Uh, we'll have a look at the Champions League. That was won by Bayern Munich. So we will be, of course, involved in the European Super Cup and we'll play Bayern in one of the opening games next season, one of our first friendlies. Uh, will be the European Super Cup. Real Madrid won the Super Cup last season. But uh, we'll have a quick look at uh, the top goal scorer for this year. In fact, Yusuf Pals, an hour of striker, finished second in the charts behind a very, very uh, emphatic Edinson Cavani with 25 goals in the Barclays Premier League this season. We do have Callum Wilson up there with 13 as well and Georgiev on 12 in 12th. So uh, we had goals from throughout the squad in fairness this year. 10 goals from Quezzi as well. All four of our strikers involved in the top 25 top scorers list. That is definitely a sign of a good season. Johannes Geis got 11 assists as well. So we've got a player in second in the top goal scorers and second in the assist charts. Did anyone else from Cambridge? Well, yes, look, Wilson, Appiah, Ivaz and Georgiev all there on in uh, 12th through to 15th on six assists. That's mental, the fact that they all came there in uh, a clutch and uh, Vidio there in 24th with five as well. Did we have many uh, clean seats? I'm not too sure, actually, whether uh, we will have had many clean seats. Is... He on there. Yes, Hutchinson down in 16th with six clean seats. So somehow, by only keeping six clean seats all season, we were able to finish third. We scored 79 goals, which is more than anybody else in the league. We also conceded 50, which is a lot more than anybody else in the top 10, other than Southampton there on 52. So... Not the most impressive defensive stats, but it was our ability to outscore the opposition that led us to the Champions League for next season. I'm really pleased with how things went this year, to be completely honest. Very, very pleased. We won the European competition and we uh, qualified for the Champions League next year. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the Championship. Swansea City and Derby County will be joining us again next season, as well as one of Watford, Forest, Fulham and Cardiff. I won't make the mistake this season of trying to look for Cambridge in League 2, because last year I was like, oh, where are Cambridge? Why can't I see Cambridge? And then it dawned on me, I'm Cambridge. Oh, such an idiotic moment. But anyway, let's have a look in France. PSG won the league, and Lyon will uh, join them in the Champions League, and Marseille as well. I'm, I think it's only three spots in the Champions League for France. I might be mistaken, but I think it's only three. In Germany, it's four, and Bayern Munich win the league by uh, 
three points from Bayer Leverkusen. Wolfsburg and Dortmund will also join them in the Champions League next season, so we could face any of those in uh, the group stage. Obviously, Juventus win the Scudetto again. 11 points clear of Roma into Milan. They're in third, who stay above uh, City teammates or City rivals AC by goal difference, by plus five. Now, I think it's three Champions League spots in Italy as well. Well, I might be mistaken again, but I'm pretty sure it's three, and then it's four in Spain. Ajax will be through to the Champions League, though, with uh, victory in the uh, the Netherlands, in the Eredivisie. So will Benfica and Porto from uh, Portugal, and perhaps Braga. I'm not sure whether Braga will go into the playoffs. Zenit St. Petersburg will be there, as well as CSA, CSKA Moscow. Celtic will be in the group stage, but Barcelona win La Liga. Real Madrid come second, Atleti third, and Valencia fourth. Probably the order in which you would expect those four clubs to come for the first time, I think, in this entire series. They have ended up in that order, but uh, Villarreal down there in 8th, disappointing for them, but uh, Sweden, Malmo will join us, Galatasaray and Besiktas will probably be in the group stage as well, uh, Fenerbahce might be in the playoffs, uh, and obviously teams from the United States, Argentina etc aren't involved in the, uh, the Champions League, but I'm very, very excited to get going in the Champions League. Also very excited when this guy turns 16 to call him up to my first team. Potential of 89 to 94. We are going to have a future star on our hands, boys, for next season. And hopefully he's going to be absolutely incredible. Fingers crossed he'll get an upgrade overall as well from 68 to 72 from to like 72 to 80 perhaps. Who knows? But... Really looking forward to bringing that guy up. I've actually called up three other youngsters as well to uh, to the first team from uh, the youth ranks. We've got Kirk here, who is a 64-rated uh, centre forward. And uh, you'll be able to see in closer detail his stats in the squad report that we'll go into in a minute. But he's got a five-star weak foot. Can play centre forward, cam or centre back. Interesting. 70-rated Jones as well. He looks like he could grow into quite a nice goalkeeper. We are losing a Vavor, which isn't a problem. And we are, of course, getting in a new goalkeeper on uh, on a pre-contract at the beginning of the next season. So a Vavor can go. Uh, Jones will probably go out on loan. Although I might even consider selling Hutchinson. You'll have to let me know in the comment section what you think of that. Because Jones could grow quite nicely. We've also brought up Masana as well. Although he unfortunately is only 58 rated. He did look like he was going to be towards the uh, lower 60s. Perhaps even mid 60s when I first called him up. Navarro's come up recently as well. Obviously Damian came up during the, uh, the season previously. As did Clark. And uh, we've got George Murphy here as well, who is extremely good in the tackle. If we find it, there we go. 92 stand tackle at just 17 years of age. So we've got a big squad now. We we are planning on selling Julian von Hart next year. Also planning on offering a uh, decent contract to two or three players that we are definitely going to move on. So obviously Julian von Hart we want to move on. I'm also wanting to move on... Uh, Callum Wilson as well, he wants to leave, so I will offer him a, a large contract as well to try and carry as much as many funds over to the next season as we possibly can. Fiola I'll try and get rid of again, although I may have to just end up releasing him. Um, Gilles, uh, some of the youngsters like Gilles, etc., I'll, uh, I'll just send out on loan again, and uh, Jaden Clark, etc., and uh, Brower. But Paul Downing's refused a contract, so I'm not sure what to do with him. I may look to... I'd rather not sell him on. I'd rather not sell him on, but Quezzi's accepted a contract and he's going to stay with us now because Callum Wilson wants to leave. Mane and Palzen of, or no, Mane and Kirk have accepted contracts, although Kirk is the youngster that we brought up, as you've seen. So I'm not sure who else I want to move on. I'll offer Julian von Hart, maybe not too big a wage increase because I want to make sure that we can get him out the door, but I will probably offer some more players uh, a larger contract as well. I'm really not sure who else to move on. Manolo Gabbiadini, not Manolo, Stefano Gabbiadini I want to move on as well. So we'll offer him a little bit of money to see if we can move him out the door. But players like, I might give some of the other players that, uh, you know, are involved in my first team picture just a little bit of a pay rise, just out of courtesy, because we are going to get a decent transfer budget next year from finishing in a Champions League position. And we're going to sell Julian von Haag for upwards of £30 million as well. But let's have a quick squad report then to round things out for this season. And then in tomorrow's episode, we'll head into the, uh, the transfer window and have a look at some transfer targets for the upcoming season. Feel free to leave me some suggestions in the comment section of tonight's video as well to make sure that I uh, have... A full list of players that we can have a look at. As you can see, Marcus Hutchison. I'm not sure what to do with him. He's only 18, so can really grow quite nicely. And despite only six assists in the BPL, I don't. I really don't know because he made some big mistakes, but he also made some massive saves. So I'm torn with him. I really am. Marco Polenz, though, is uh, growing very nicely at right back. John Stones is obviously still growing nicely. 27 years of age, 82 rated. Matteo Mustachio. 
will uh, hopefully continue to grow for a season or two. His stats at the top, his physical stats dropped because he was injured for a while, but he's grown a one overall. Biraki is continuing to grow and he's going to be obviously a solid left back for us continually, as is Sadio Mane in the terms of uh, a wide player. Uh, Johannes Geis feels threatened. So uh, I'm not obviously with 11 assists though he's going to continue to be at the club 16 assists in all competitions a very good season for Johannes Geis very very good season Julian von Hart will move on 32 million pounds is his value so we can really get a lot of money for him hopefully Timo Werner will stay as well he's been very good for us this season four goals five assists disappointed that he hasn't grown though but 81 is still a good rating for him Josef Paulsen is up three he scored 34 goals in 38 games this season crazy stats we only paid three million pounds plus to Kalo Ranti for him. Absolutely unbelievable. Israel Georgiev is up three again as well. Every single season since we've had Georgiev at the club, he has improved and been one of our best goal scorers. 23 goals and 14 assists in all competitions this season for Israel Georgiev. Unreal. It's Georgiev and Palzen, absolutely incredible strikers for us. Cannon Wilson feels threatened and he's unhappy and wants to leave and I'm going to let him go and we'll probably look to bring in someone else. Uh, if it will eventually let me back out of that. Thank you very much. He did score 15 goals in 25 games, though, so fair play to him. But we decided that we're going to keep Quezzy and we'll sell on Callum Wilson. George Murphy I'll probably send out on loan next year if I can. Wendell will continue to be my backup left-back. Although I'm tempted to try and bring... It depends how much money we have next season, really, to be completely honest. Because if we can go out and buy four players for 10 million each, I might look to be able to sell on Wendell and then have Baraki and a replacement in as my left-backs. Fizeo Adarabioyo has been the point of a lot of my commentating over the past few episodes, especially in the live comms. But you can see why I was raging over him. Uh, 90 or... Uh, ranting over him 91 short passing 95 acceleration 94 sprint speed really good stamina as well and he's grown every single time every single year that we've had him and he's got uh, not really good long shots actually great long passing as well and obviously he can play at center mid or cam sorry and out wide which is why he was so useful especially with that pace and the good ball control as well so uh, he's been a very very good player for us I'm really pleased with him uh, Alvaro Vidio has been decent Three goals and eight assists for him. He missed a large chunk of the season as well due to injury, unfortunately. But hopefully he will continue to play a squad role for us. Attila Fiola will be, will be moving on. Uh, Yusuf Ivas didn't grow as much as I was expecting him to, although he did play a decent part for us this season. Uh, his physical stats still maintain to be absolutely incredible. Hopefully his technicals can grow a little bit more next season as well. Uh, Tiavi Wolongwa is a good rotation centre-back, although again, I may look to move him out if we have the money to bring in uh, much bigger replacements or better replacements. Uh, one Andrew Aguadai is unhappy. I think it was a new contract, actually. Yes, feels he's underpaid, so we'll perhaps give him a little bit more money. Very, very good on the ball. As you can see, 90 ball control, 79 dribbling, and a good short and long passing as well. He's been not as heavily involved as he might like to be, but still a good player for us. Stefano Gabbiadini, I will move on. Uh, Esteban Navarro will go out on loan. Same with Damian. Same with Aguado. Same with Masana. Same with Jaden Clark. Same with Tom Jones, the goalkeeper. I don't know why I'm really tempted to keep him in. I'm tempted to have him as my rotation keeper. Sell Hutchinson, and then we'll have... Um, we've got... Uh, a, I can't remember his name. Is it Aviola? Or Ariola, it's Ariola, isn't it, with an R? Ariola coming in as a goalkeeper from PSG. Uh, Avevor can go. Kirk will go out on loan. Hector Bayerian wants to leave, and I'm quite happy to let him go. He hasn't grown anywhere near as much as I like, would have wanted him to. And we do have Arias, the right-back, coming in from PSV to replace him. Quezzi is staying, going absolutely nowhere. 30 years of age now. His physicals dropped because he missed uh, a short chunk of the season as well due to injury. Paul Downing is unhappy. Feels he's underpaid, but I uh, will... I'll judge what you guys reckon about Paul Downey. He's been with us a long time, a very long time. Six seasons he's been at the club. He's kind of like Quezzy, so I may just keep Paul Downey. And then obviously uh, Gillett will go back out on loan as well. And uh, Brow will probably go back out on loan or be sold also. So that's what the squad looks like right now. We'll head into uh, season number eight in the next episode tomorrow. And then we'll have a look at some transfer targets. But for now, that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. As always, subscribe if you haven't already. Check the channel page for anything you may have missed over the past few days. Whether it be the My Player episode earlier on this afternoon that again had an extremely important vote in it for you guys or uh, anything else on the channel with Barcelona Kumo perhaps or some of the stream footage we'll be streaming FIFA tonight over on Twitch as well so follow the link in the description to my Twitch channel follow me on Twitter as well and add me on Facebook check out my sponsor G2A all of the links are in the description down below and I'll see you next time